Hey guys and girls, what's up? I am John Merritt from BornToProduce.com and today we're going to look at and review the new features of Cubase 10 in the context of is it a worthy upgrade from version 9.5? We're going to review the full pro version of Cubase, but apart from a couple of features that are not available in Elements and Artists, like Vary Audio, it's all relevant to those versions. So let's get on with it. Okay, so this is Cubase 10, and you'll notice probably straight away that the UI has been slightly tweaked. And all the toolbars just look very slightly different. And the main reason for this is because of the new UI scaling that's going on. And that's called High DPI, which you can get to by going to Edit, Preferences. The Preferences, by the way, are now in the Edit menu. And in the General tab, you can enable High DPI. Basically, it just means that if you're using like a really high resolution screen, like a 4K screen, when you use the Windows scaling to zoom in to say like 125% or 150%, then everything will scale correctly. So, new plugins and instruments. Well, on the surface, this is probably the most disappointing thing about the upgrade from 9.5 to 10, as there is literally only one actually new plugin and no new instruments at all. There are many updates to existing plugins and instruments, but we're gonna to get to that in just a sec. So the new one that has been added is called Destroyer, and as you would guess, it is a distortion plugin. So this is very easy to use, and you can go from extreme hardcore distortion to adding just gentle hard harmonics and um, the fact that you can select the frequency range that you want to affect with the distortion effect is actually really neat so you can be quite selective about where you apply the distortion effect to your frequency spectrum so whether you just want to warm up the mids a bit or really destroy the high end you know whatever it is that you want to do so let's talk about the updated plugins and instruments. So Groove Agent SE4 is now Groove Agent SE5, but it has not been changed to the point where you would not recognize it at all. So if you're used to Groove Agent SE4, you will feel right at home. The main improvement really is that it has a load more content with extra kits, more options, and the already great complexity settings have been added to with a very nice auto mode and selectable auto fills. There are also a ton of other little tweaks and improvements like being able to undock the content browser. Suffice to say, it's a pretty decent step up. And as with the rest of Cubase, it is now high DPI compatible and also fully resizable. So pretty much all of the plugin effects have been updated visually, so they are nicer to use, and some have even been improved and rearranged, like the stereo delay, which is now much, much easier to use and to select the different timings that you want. Distortion now has oversampling, and the basic studio EQ that comes with elements has now been improved so it looks more like the pro version of frequency. Some have been reprogrammed so they work better, so reverence used to be annoyingly slow at loading impulse responses, now it's lightning fast. Some of the older plugins like Chopper and Transformer have all been updated um, and also their VST3 now, which should all add to the stability of Cubase 10, although to be fair, 9.5 was absolutely rock solid, at least it was for me. Now one big one is that we've got six new sample packs, which is actually pretty nice. Just adding more variety to the inbuilt samples that are already there, which are already very usable themselves. Very Audio has had a complete overhaul and is now absolutely brilliant. All the important functions are now controllable on each segment with these nice little control points called smart controls, making it way faster to edit vocals. The top control straightens pitch, the bottom control quantizes the pitch, and the ends are just time warp, uh, which makes it really nice and quick to correct timing errors when you're going through and pitch correcting. You now have pitch snap mode, so we've got absolute which just snaps it to the absolute notes relative which of course keeps it in the same relative position and then off which just enables you to move it around freely now one of the main annoyances with very audio 2 was to split a segment you actually had to go into a separate uh, segments mode and then split the segment and then go back into very audio to then correct the pitch of those segments now it's just all built into the main very audio so you just go down to the bottom you get the scissors tool split it you can also glue segments back together again as well and it makes it much quicker to use very audio now 
There's a new formant feature as well. So we've got formant shift over here. It's very good quality and used subtly. It can be used to sort of tweak the intensity of the vocal, like a word sung. So you might be wondering where the pitch bend functions are. Well, you can still bend the pitch and for that you need to activate all smart controls. And then you'll notice you get all these extra controls around the segment. Now, obviously this is a very, very quick look. I'm not gonna go into much detail. There's actually a video that I've done on Very Audio 3, which goes into much more detail about all the different functions. I'll link to that down in the description. But for now, the last thing I'll show you is this MIDI reference track. So you can click here and let's select the pad, for example, and suddenly you've got the actual chords that are being used at that particular moment in time overlaid on the very audio interface. So you can very easily pick which notes you should be using. And that goes hand in hand with using the chord track as well. So for the first time in Cubase, we now have the ability to match one recording's timings to another. So basically, if you've got a sort of say a chorus vocal sung three times, obviously the timing's gonna be just very slightly different on each one. Now you can pick one of those takes and use that as like the master or the reference, and then pick another take, the other chorus takes, use that as a target. And then literally you just go align audio and it will automatically time stretch that audio so it fits exactly with your reference track. So this will literally save me personally hours of audio editing. Then we have the sort of slightly improved audio editor. So when you select multiple takes and go into it, you can now actually view all of the different waveforms for that audio. Obviously you can see the different colors there which make up the different ones and you can select which take you want to work on. Then you can just free warp these to sort of exactly match another performance. So this together with auto audio alignment, you now have a really powerful set of tools for matching any recorded audio. So the channel strip has had a redesign. It's not a huge thing, but it's been updated so it's a bit easier and nicer to look at. So you can just drag and drop these to change the order and some of them can be edited further with the edit module button. So you can go in and just change the settings like that. So in the right hand zone in our media browser, you now have access to all of the available plugins and instruments in the instruments and or VST effects respectively. This is an improvement on the previous version as you could only see the Cubase built in instruments before, but here you can also see all your third party instruments and now with pictures as well, although you do have to manually take a shot of that. So let me just very quickly show you what that looks like. So once you load your instrument, you just go up to the little picture tool and click it and then your picture will appear there. Hopefully that will become automatic at some point, but at the moment you have to do that manually. And that's if you want to see the pictures, you don't have to, you can turn them all off there and just use a list like normal, which is probably a bit quicker, but it certainly might help the people who are new to Cubase and new to music production. So a lot of the time you'll want to set up an effects channel with say a delay or a reverb on and then send the signal through and get delay or reverb or whatever it is. You just grab your plug in from the rack here and just drop it onto the send of whatever channel it is that you want to add reverb or delay to. It will literally create an effects channel, add the plug in to that channel and also set the send up from the channel that you want it to to go to that effects group already. So it just makes it really, really quick and easy. So that is a big time saver. Okay, so let's have a look at the mix console. So now you have what's called snapshots. So let's say we've got this mix here and it's great, but I wanna just try a different mix. So I can come up and go to save mix console snapshot, a little camera icon, click it. And then if I show you the left-hand zone, you'll see that I've now got a snapshot there which I can load at any time by going recall snapshot. And then what I can do is I can come in and change the mix to however I want, take another snapshot, which will save the second one, snapshot two, and then I can just simply switch between two as I want just to check out the different mixes. You can have up to four different snapshots and if you want, you can change the settings. So you right click, go to recall settings and you can choose which what's gonna be recalled when you use the snapshots. So you could have it for just volumes, just pans or, or whatever, or the whole lot. So you'll be very pleased to know that the context menu has now been changed. So if you select a bit of audio or MIDI, hold Alt or Option on a Mac, right click. And then yes, this menu used to be absolutely massive and just a real maze to navigate. So now it's been massively simplified. So you've got all your important stuff like processes, bounce selection, render in place, and that sort of thing. 
So side chaining has been improved as well. Now it wasn't that bad before, but now it's really super quick to do. So all you do is like always, you activate your side chain, but now you don't even have to go to the track that you want to use as the side chain input. You just click this little down arrow, hit add side chain input, select the track that you want to use. Obviously it's normally the kick and that's it. It's already set up. So if you go to the kick track, you'll find that there's a send there, sending this to the side chain input of this compressor. Super easy. Okay, so chord pads has been updated. The most noticeable things are the sort of context menus and everything, so they're just much nicer now. And you've got this button here as well, which is activate, record, enable, or monitor of MIDI instruments to use tracks. All that means is that chord pads can be now sort of used more as a separate instrument or as a separate MIDI controller. So you can use it to trigger external instruments and that sort of thing. The offline processing has now been improved just with added functionality. You can now cut and copy or save preset chains. Again, a nice little workflow improvement for some people who use it a lot. And you can now go up to 360 BPM. I can't see myself using that extra functionality, but there you go, that's what you can do. You can go up to 360 BPM. So my thoughts as a long time producer, overall I'm quite impressed, there are a load of tweaks and workflow improvements like easy side chaining, vast improvements to vary audio, the UI has been tidied up and just general improvements that sort of make Cubase nicer to use and for the most part they have been implemented uh, pretty well these improvements um, in a very accessible way without destroying the current way you do things although there are a couple of small points which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, for newbies to Cubase and music production I think it's more accessible than ever before with easy drag and drop to set up effects channels and instruments and easy setup of sends, plugin pictures, things are better organized. So for people new to music production and or Cubase, I'd say version 10 is a big step in the right direction. Now very quickly, we do have a course to help newbies to learn Cubase. Just click the link in the description and I'll explain a bit more about this in a moment, but let's just finish the review first. So there are a couple of negatives at the time of review and bear in mind that the version I am reviewing is a late beta version and supposedly it's the final release version although I'm hoping that some of these issues will have been sorted out by the time of release but it's also likely a couple might remain at least in the early version. So the first thing is the new high DPI scaling does not appear to be working properly. I use a 4K TV for my main screen so I prefer to be zoomed in at 125% but at the moment it does not work it just stays the same until you zoom into 150% and then everything's just massive. Uh, this is a bug as far as I can tell and I'm sure will be sorted out pretty quickly. Uh, I will modify the description and comments of this video to reflect if and when these issues are fixed. So check that out for clarification as it may well be that they have been fixed by the time you watch this. Also, on their quest to streamline everything, they may have gone a touch too far in some areas. You can no longer resize the right-click toolbar. Now that was so handy uh, and was much quicker to use when you could have it in two separate lines like in Cubase 9.5. And I can get used to this, but I just don't see any reason for the change. And now my workflow is just that little bit slower uh, because of it. Also, at the moment in the audio export window, you used to be able to go in, select the file and folder at the same time. And if you wanted to replace a file, which I do fairly often, you could just double click that file and that was that, the file was selected. Now to replace the file, you have to select first the folder where that file is, go out of it and then you can't just select the same file, you have to actually type in the name of the file. So to replace it, I have to type the name in exactly, otherwise it won't work. Now that is quite frankly ridiculous and a pain in the ass. And I wouldn't be very surprised if we do not see a change in the very near future when enough people complain. Now I only export a couple of times a day, so for me it's not really a deal breaker, but I can imagine there are people who this will really affect their workflow and won't want to upgrade until it's sorted out. So in summary, there's not really one feature on its own that would make me want to upgrade, but all of the improvements added together make it easily an upgrade, at least for me. And that is coming from a producer's point of view. Obviously, I actually teach Cubase as well, so I would upgrade on that fact alone because I need to be teaching the newest software. But in this review, I am purely looking at it as from a producer's point of view. And music production is my main passion, so I do take it pretty seriously. 
And now even with all of the negative points I've mentioned, it's still a really good upgrade for most people. 95% of the workflow improvements are effective and increase the speed at which you can produce music, and I think that speaks for itself. So that's my review, but what do you guys think? Have I missed something? Is there something there that is gonna really annoy you or that you are really looking forward to? Let me know in the comments below and let's talk about it. Please also do like, subscribe and hit the alert button as we'll be releasing loads more Cubase 10 and music production videos in the coming weeks. Now, if you are new to Cubase and want to learn how to use it in the quickest and easiest way possible, then check out our Cubase 10 Ultimate Beginner's Guide, where you learn all about Cubase whilst making a track from nothing right through to the final mix down. It's actually the track that's been playing in the background of this video, although the version you make in the course has a full vocal as well, so you learn all about vocal recording and processing, as well as producing and mixing the whole track. It's a really great course, and if you are new to Cubase or music production, definitely check it out. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching.